Can artificial intelligence make you a better basketball player? Today, we're gonna answer that by using ChatGPT. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just gonna put it to the test and we're gonna see what it can do for you. And of course, they're all gonna give you my reactions to see how good the answers are. So let's ask ChatGPT, how can I get better at basketball? Becoming a better basketball player requires practice and dedication, 100% agree. Here are some tips to help you improve. Practice shooting. Shooting is one of the most important skills in basketball. Absolutely. Make sure to practice different types of shots, including layups, jump shots, and three-pointers. Agree with that. Work on your dribbling. Cat handles basketball. It's kind of what we talk about here. Should have had it number one. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they're both very, very important. Dribbling is the key to maneuvering around defenders and creating scoring opportunities. Practice dribbling drills to improve your ball handling skills. Improve your footwork, very good answer. That's not something a lot of people, nowadays I think it's a little bit more in the forefront, but for years, footwork was kind of like something that didn't get talked about as a skill very often, not nearly as much as it should have. Good footwork is essential for making moves, playing defense and rebounding. Spend time working on your agility, balance and coordination through various footwork drills. Number four, strengthen your muscles. Basketball requires a combination of speed, agility, and power. Incorporate weight training and plyometrics into your workout regimen to build strength and explosiveness. Overall, I agree with that. I don't think I would have let it as strengthen your muscles, though, because when we talk about things like speed and agility, it's not all necessarily strength. That's more kind of like power work, elasticity, having, you know, springy tendons, things like that can kind of help with a lot of that side of things. So obviously you do need to have strength too, to, a, to a degree, but I don't think it's as important as in other sports as having just like brute strength. I think it's more about having functional strength and, and basketball specific types of strength, speed, agility, things that were mentioned, but I just don't know if I would have made that like the header for that bullet point. Number five, play with and against better players. Playing with and against players who are more skilled than you will help you see what you need to work on and push you to improve. Absolutely agree with that, but I also think it's important to play with players occasionally that are not as good as you. And a lot of coaches think that's not good because you pick up bad habits. But when you're playing against players that are not as good as you, it allows you to kind of be a little more confident and experiment and try things that you normally wouldn't so you can start to you know expand your skill set. It's very hard if you're working on a new move and you don't feel like you have it mastered or maybe you feel like you've got the mechanics for it down, but like you don't feel like you could do it on a high level defender. Sometimes going against a lower level defender it can give you some sort of like a baby step or tr putting on the training wheels, right? So to speak, to build confidence, but also figure out how you need to tweak that move before it's ready to use it in the big game. So that's one thing I would add to that. Watch and learn from the pros. Watch professional basketball games to see how the best players in the world play the game. Pay attention to their footwork, shooting form, and decision-making skills. Absolutely agree with that. I would say that with a caveat, though. I think there's a lot to learn from the pros, but it's going to depend with where you're, like, what level you're playing at for how much you should be watching the pros and what your goals are and, and what your offense is. So example, if you're on a high school team, that could really sway a lot depending on your coach, but you might want to think about watching more college college basketball but for some high school teams you might want to think about watching more pros it just depends on the way your coach is going to run things if it's going to be a little more free-flowing loose a little bit more isolation and, and type basketball and, and allowing the person with the basketball to do more that's going to be really really important to okay then in that instance yeah watch maybe a little bit more pro basketball but if you're looking at playing college basketball at one point that game is going to be different than pros so you know in high school it depends on what style of offense you're going to play College is usually going to be a little more structured and you have to play a role and stay, stay within the offense and in certain positions. And then pro level or like rec leagues and pickup, that's going to be a little bit more kind of free flowing and kind of do what you want sort of a thing, or at least there's a little more flex there. And then number seven, stay mentally focused. Mental focus and determination are just as important as physical ability. Yes, that is such a great thing to say. Stay motivated and committed to your training and never get up, up on your goals. That's really, really important. It's such an overlooked thing, I think, for a lot of players. And everything you do in a game and in how much you practice, what you practice, how often you practice, the, the detail you put into your practice, is all starts up here first. So the mental side of things cannot be overlooked. And just playing better in games, you know, understanding offenses, IQ, you know, looking for tendencies in the other team's players and how you can better play them, tendencies in your teammates, so you know how to better play with them. Like all those things are things that can help you literally play better today. And then lastly, it says, remember improvement takes time. So be patient and keep working hard. Good luck. Well, thanks chat GPT. We appreciate that. So let's ask an, an, another question, a little bit more specific though. Let's see if we can actually get a good workout out of chat GPT and see if you can use AI. This is not helping me by the way, cause I do sell training programs. I'll have those linked in the description down below. But you know, if you want to check those out from me, I've been a skills trainer for about 
13-ish years, a little more than that, full-time for about eight. So you can see what I have to offer, but let's see how ChatGPT stacks up. Let's say, give me a workout to become a better basketball player. And she, she, he or she, I don't know if ChatGPT is a boy or a girl, gave kind of a workout in that last answer to, to a degree, not like reps and, and exact things to do, but pretty specific, you know, things, dribbling, shooting. There were some things that were also missed there now that I think about it. Defense wasn't mentioned, rebounding, you know, things like that, passing. Those were skills that weren't mentioned. But if we're being honest, to become a star player, a lot of that comes down to dribbling and shooting. So let's see what the workout is. Sure, here's a sample basketball workout that you can use to improve your overall athleticism. Hmm, that's disappointing because it wasn't what we were looking for. Because basketball is more than improving athleticism, but we'll ask a follow-up question to see if we can get a workout for that. Warm-up. Start with a light jog and some dynamic stretching to get your muscles warmed up. Agree with that? Great call. This could include exercises such as high knees, butt kicks, and side shuffles. Pretty good stuff. I think there's more to it than that. I like to, in my warm-ups, uh, I got a free workout in the description down below too. Grab that. You'll see how much like I like to focus on the hands, the wrists, ankles. There's a lot of overlooked parts of the body that are really important for basketball that don't get talked about. But when you do things like high knees, butt kicks, side shuffles, you're gonna work a little bit of those things, but not to the degree that I prefer to in warmups. Agility drills. Agility drills can help you improve your footwork, quickness, and reaction time. Examples include cone drills, ladder drills, and shuttle runs. So we're not getting very much of a specific workout here, which is sort of disappointing so far. We're just getting some overall examples and guidelines and ideas, which is good and gives you sort of a starting point, but you're not getting reps and sets. Like when we're talking about what the next thing is gonna be like plyometrics, like, well, let me see the answer and then and then I'll give you my two cents I was about to. Plyometrics are exercises that are that increase explosive power and help with jumping ability. Examples include jump squats, box jumps, and tuck jumps. Those are all pretty good answers. There's definitely a lot more we could talk about, but one thing that needs to be mentioned when we're talking plyometrics is number one, it should be got, gotten in early in your workout and maybe the only thing in your workout when you're really trying to improve vertical jump and overall power. Uh, another thing that's important to consider with that is something that wasn't mentioned at all here, which is your rests. You know, you gotta get a lot of rest in between your repetitions, low repetitions generally you're gonna wanna have. So things like that are things that we're not getting answers on or, or guidance on that you would hope to get. So, so far I would give artificial intelligence a on helping you improve your game. But let's continue. Resistance band exercises. Resistance band exercises can help improve your overall strength and stability. Focus on exercises that target your legs and core, such as resistance band squats and core rotation. I I'm not a uh, hater on resistance bands. I think there's a time and a place for them. They definitely can be used for certain things that are gonna be more helpful than others. It's good because it's accessible for just about any player very cheaply if you don't, you know, you can't get a weight room set in your home. However, that being said, I just feel like for certain things and a lot of things, you're just better off using weights. And if you have to get a gym membership to do that or get you know, some sort of a small home gym or fill up milk jugs with water or stones or sand, that's a really good thing you could do. I, I just feel like resistance bands are good, but they have their limits. Like for example, if I have a resistance band hooked up over here and I'm gonna like try to work my pec by going here, well, there's really no resistance until I start getting to here, right? So now I'm getting a lot of resistance here, even more here, even more here, even more here. But meanwhile, back here, I'm not getting as many strength gains. So things like that. But there's also a lot of advantages to resistance bands. You can use them in a lot of creative ways. Next, shooting drills. Spend time working on your shooting form and accuracy. 100% agree with that. I would always say to start with your form and then start moving away from the, the hoop. Get that form right and then start thinking about accuracy. Start with stationary shots, then progress to shooting on the move, off the dribble, and from various spots on the court. That's a really, really good answer there as far as that goes because the off the dribble type shooting work is something a lot of players don't work on enough you know especially when we're just talking like your basic dribble into a one-two pull up like you should be repping the snot out of that or a between the legs dribble hanging the ball right into a, a pull up jump shot things like that not just going like and one mixtape crazy moves and then all of a sudden just chucking up a shot or trying to be steph curry with a crazy combo chucking up a shot but getting in game specific dribble moves that you're going to use very frequently and getting in a little bit of the and one mixtape or something a little bit more advanced from time to time to expand your skill set I think is great but I think the majority of your shots should be kind of more the basic stuff that you're going to get a lot in games and off the dribble is really important shooting off the move is good and off the catch of course and then various spots on the court is also important scrimmaging this is great that that's in there I think scrimmaging one-on-ones two-on-twos five-on-fives all that is great you got to get in with live defense. Scrimmaging is a great way to work on your skills, it says, in, game, in a game-like setting. Play full court games with friends or teammates to put your skills to the test. And, you know, just to get the ability to, like, 
flow within an offense, read and react to defense, uh, see where the open gaps are, see, be able to time a teammate and hit them in the gap between the defense at that right moment. Things like that are really hard to work on, on in your own one-on-ones, even team practices to a, to a degree, unless it's more something with live defense. So I think that's really, really important. Cool down, finish your workout with a cool down that includes light jogging and static stretching. This can help reduce muscle soreness and improve recovery. Yeah, overall, I agree with that. You know, I, I don't think the light jogging is really super necessary personally. I think something, some light movement though, it doesn't have to necessarily be jogging and stretching can help. Uh, I also am a big fan of foam rolling and yeah, anything deep tissue related. Uh, there's also things called voodoo floss bands that, that I find really helpful for like lower extremities and, and smaller limbs, like, like your ankles, your feet, your calves, and then anything from the elbows down basically, and even around the elbows, but hard to get anything with the shoulders and the hips with those. And then remember, it's important to listen to your body and avoid overtraining. I think that's super crucial. And you know, not just avoiding overtraining, but also like listening to your body. Like if you have a nagging issue, not just looking at, okay, I'm just going to rest, but like, how can I correct this issue? Sometimes it's like a muscle imbalance. You have a knot in a certain area. You just need to get some more blood flow in there. It just depends. But that's something like I'm at, I'm at 42 years old now. So I've experienced a lot, had a lot of nagging injuries still do. And I've gotten really good at figuring out, okay, how can we kind of speed up this healing process? Or maybe it's just a muscle imbalance or an overuse injury. And there's a lot of different ways you can kind of speed up that recovery process and, and, or keep training at the same time. So, you know, being able to keep some level of training in daily, I think is really important, even if it is super light, just like sitting down and dribbling. And this says incorporate rest days into your workout regimen and make sure, and I would say more instead of rest days, I would say light days. If you want to like, if you have big goals with basketball, I would say you should be training every day. But what I'm defining as training could be maybe just, again, you sitting and dribbling could be an active recovery day with you doing foam rolling and stretching and maybe some yoga, something light like that, or film study and things like that, you know, where you're working on the IQ side of things. But I think there should be something every day personally. And make sure you eat a well-balanced diet to support your training, super important as well. I can attest to that to myself for myself because I used to have a pretty bad diet and then I started having stomach problems and I'm sure it was also causing, actually I know it was causing other problems with my body. So yeah, keeping that diet clean is really, really important. Big advice I can give is, you know, there's some people that like the keto diet, they do intermittent fasting. You've got people that, you know, there's carnivore diet now, there's vegetarians. But I think the one overarching piece of advice that I think no matter where you fit with all that would be a good piece of advice. And again, I'm not a doctor or a dietitian. This is my personal experience and research I've done. But I would say whole food diet, right? Eliminate as much processed food as you can. And when I say processed, I mean, we're talking a lot of things, like a lot of white bread. You would think, is, oh, that's a whole food. Well, depends on how it's made and what the ingredients are. So really look at your ingredient labels and that can really help with your diet. Let's do one more overarching basketball question and I'm gonna do a follow-up video asking questions about more specific skills and how we can improve them and see if we can get a little more detail, like give me exactly what to do in my workout. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to catch that. Let's check out this next question though. Let's, let, let's ask it, what's the fastest way to get better at basketball. Let's let's see if we get a different answer here. Cause before it was just like, you know, overall things that you should do in general to get better. But I wanna see if like we can get like a shortcut or something here, right? Improving your basketball skills takes time, effort, and dedication. Basically, ChatGPT says there's no shortcuts. There are some steps you can take to accelerate your progress. Okay, cool. Practice consistently. I agree with that 100%. Consistent practice is the key to getting better at basketball. Make sure you set aside dedicated time each day to work on your skills. Now that's interesting, each day. The last question, ChatGPT said, make sure you incorporate rest days. Which one is it? I think every day. There's something to be said for just getting your hands on the basketball every single day, even if it's for like two, three minutes. Just having that consistent feel of the basketball in your hands, just fiddling around with the basketball. Ideally, obviously, if, you know, most days you want to get more of a full workout, but that consistency is so important. And I would take someone putting in 10 minutes every single day than someone that puts in two hours one day. And that person that put in the two hours one day got in more overall time in practice. That's 120 minutes versus someone 10 minutes every day at 70 minutes. I'll take the 10 minute person every single time. And the other thing about that is if you put in those 10 minutes, odds are once you're to the court or you have the basketball on your hands, you're probably going to go longer than that. If 10 minutes is your minimum, right? Some days you're like, okay, 10 minutes is good. But then there's gonna be other days where you're just like, yeah, I'm feeling it. Let's do a little more, right? So odds are you're probably going to get more than that 120 minutes that that other person that did the two hour workout. Focus on your weaknesses. Great answer. It's one of my biggest things. Identify the areas of your game that need the most work and prioritize improving them. That includes shooting, dribbling, footwork, or defense. And there's a lot more that wasn't mentioned there, like passing, things like that, court IQ. But I think
think that's really, really crucial because if you're a nine out of 10 at dribbling and over here at shooting, you're a three out of a 10, like how much are you really gonna improve and how quickly there, right? Over here with the shooting, wow, lots of room to improve. You can improve really, really fast. And the thing about that is also now, if you get better at your shooting, now the defense has to play closer to you. So now all that dribbling skill helps all a lot more because when the defense is closer, it's easier to drive past them. So now you create a really tough situation for the defense where they're like, what do I guard more, the shot or the drive? So you can you know, get them biting on fakes, more all kinds of stuff, all from improving the weakness. So that's a great thing to have as far as a fast way to improve. Get feedback from a coach or mentor. Yes, great. Having a coach or mentor who can provide you with constructive feedback can be invaluable. They can help you identify areas for improvement and provide tips for reaching your goals. That really ties a lot in with number two. Like a lot of times you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know what your weakness is necessarily, or maybe there's a weakness that you're not spotting, but a really good coach or a trainer can help you kind of figure out what that is and, and know exactly, okay, no, you need to work on your dribbling, but they can go a level deeper. You have a pretty good, like I would say maybe a lot of players I see, okay, you have maybe good footwork, but not good ball control, or you have good ball control, but your footwork isn't good, or your footwork is good going to the left, but not to the right or vice versa. Like. I'm going to look at things very, very detailed and a good coach or trainer can really help you pinpoint those things and not just brush things in broad strokes. Like, Oh, you need to work on your weekend. Oh, you need to work on your dribbling, your shooting. Like some players are really good shooters at free throws, but they're not at pull up jump shots or vice versa. Right? So there's a lot of details that go into those skills and a coach or trainer can not only pinpoint what that thing is that you need more work on, but also how to get better at that specific thing with specific drills and that can help you get that faster improvement. Number four, play with and against better players. Playing with and against players who are more skilled than you will help you to see what you need to work on and push you to improve. Agree, and again, I would also add that playing with players not as good as you, just as a confidence boost and to start adding things to your skill set, but with the caveat that you're also getting in work and practice and games, I should say, against players that are better than you. So something to definitely consider. Watch and learn from the pros. Watch professional basketball games to see how the best players in the world play the game. Pay attention to their footwork, shooting form, and decision-making skills. Agree. And if you can find some like little tweaks maybe of something that they're doing that, that could work for you, you can get some really quick instant improvements. That being said, when we talk about like shooting form, that's going to be very dependent. Like if we're talking about getting fast improvements, which is what this question was, getting the fastest improvements might or might not be tweaking your shooting form. There might be a tweak that makes a really big improvement. However, if you've been playing for a long time and your shooting form is kind of your shooting form and you go and try to change it, it's probably going to take months of working on that shot before it becomes habit and comfortable. At that point, you're going to get the improvements. That's more of a down the road thing. So when we're talking quick improvements, maybe not the best thing to look at. However, there are tweaks, hacks, maybe you know, you notice a player doing a certain move and oh wow, okay, it works good in this situation, but not this situation. If you're playing defense this way, those are where the quick improvements are going to come is, is some of those things, more of the IQ and just knowledge of the game. I think that's going to be your quick improvements. Number six, incorporate strength and conditioning work. Becoming stronger and more athletic can help you become a better basketball player. Incorporate strength training, plyometrics, and agility drills in your workout regimen. Yeah, I agree with that. Again, I think that's somewhat of a more long-term thing. However, it's not uncommon for some players to see some pretty quick improvements from strength work. And I have noticed personally, if like I've been having like a deload phase where I don't like really do much resistance or strength training work for let's say two, three, maybe even four weeks, and then I get back into it. After I'd say about two-ish weeks, I feel great and I feel so much better on the court. And I do feel like there is some instant improvements. Like I have better body control and power and strength and, and my shots, jumping, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you could get some pretty quick improvement from that. And conditioning work for sure too. I mean, you could probably, personally, I, at least for me, I feel like, and I think a lot of players, it's like once you get your win back, you know you know what I mean? Like a week or two weeks of, of getting some consistent conditioning work, you could see some really good improvements. So yeah, you could see some pretty fast improvements from conditioning as well. And plyometrics, agility, generally that's going to take a little more time in, in my experience, but you know, sometimes some players do get some quick improvements. And then number seven, stay mentally focused. Mental focus is and determination are just as important as physical ability. Absolutely. And that determination piece right there is big. Like you can turn that on or off like a light switch. It's simply making the decision that I'm going to play more determined. I'm not going to give up. Even when I'm down, I'm going to fight through it. That can like instantly make you a better player late in games or when you have a bad play, right? A lot of players get down on themselves. And now because of that, you play a different way. You, you're not as aggressive or, or you're you know not as confident in, in what you're going to do. And because of that, you're not going to play as well. But when you're determined and you have that kind of focus and, and you're doing the other thing here, so what, you know, which is having mental focus, which is, you know, we're talking about like locking in on the game 
game? What's what's my assignment here? What do I need to do? Where do I need to be on the court? What what, what am I going to do when I'm defending this player to, to lock them down? You know, what are their tendencies? That focus and along with determination can literally instantly improve your game. So like put that to work. Let me finish that though, because I kind of got on a tangent there. It says that those things are just as important as physical ability. Stay motivated and committed to your training and never give up on your goals. So important. Never giving up on your goals is more, again, of a long-term thing. Not saying it's not important, but when we're talking about the fastest way to improve, I think some of the first parts of that description were more relevant to this. Keep in mind, it says that the fastest way to get better at basketball will depend on your starting point, the amount of time you have to dedicate to practice and your personal goals. Agree, agree, agree. But by following these steps and consistently putting the effort, you can accelerate your progress and reach your goals. Pretty good answers. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Hit the like button. Again, I got full training programs linked in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video where I ask ChatGPT some more specific questions about improving your handles.